Welcome to the National Newspaper Publishers Association's Let It Be Known, where we believe in letting the facts speak for themselves. In an era dominated by the Me Too movement, we've witnessed a surge in sexual assault allegations against high-profile individuals. Some of these claims have withstood the test of scrutiny, while others have left us grappling with uncertainty. Here at Let It Be Known, we've cho chosen consciously, consciously, I should say, to navigate the delicate terrain of allegations carefully. We prefer to reserve our judgment for the courtroom where the truth can emerge under oath. One recent example why we withheld uh, judgment or even sensationalizing allegations of sexual assault is what just happened this week with golf legend Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, in case you don't know, his ex-girlfriend, Erica Herman, dropped her sexual assault lawsuit against the legendary golfer, as well as an appeal to a non-disclosure agreement she had signed. In a notice filed in Florida's 4th District Court of Appeals to drop the appeal, Erica says that she was never a victim of sexual harassment or sexual abuse at the hands of Tiger Woods or any of his agents, as she had previously alleged. Herman had signed a non-disclosure agreement at the start of her relationship with Tiger in 2017, and she had sued to be released from the agreement, alleging, among other things, sexual assault. In May, a judge ruled she could not be released from the DNA, uh, NDA, <laughs> DNA, right? And she filed an appeal of that ruling. In her initial filing, the lawsuit cited the so-called Speak Out Act that allows for a person to be released from an NDA if they are a victim of sexual abuse. In her May ruling, Circuit Judge Elizabeth Metzger wrote that Erica Herman's reason for being released from the agreement lacked, and this is from the judge, quote, factual specificity for any claim related to sexual assault or sexual harassment. Folks, it is, as too many African-American men know, so insidious and so disgusting to falsely accuse someone of rape or sexual assault when you know well that it isn't true. Personally, I hope Tiger Woods seeks recourse in that case. And then we have the other side with Kiki Palmer apparently taking a vicious, uh, repeatedly taking vicious beatings from her boyfriend, uh, Darius Jackson, for two years. Hopefully, Kiki gets peace, and hopefully this jerk gets what he deserves. But we're not talking about Tiger or Kiki this morning. Today's broadcast takes an unexpected turn as we delve into a story that has shaken even our seasoned sensibilities. P. Diddy, Sean Puffy Combs, Puff Daddy, the music mogul, and the allegations surrounding his relationship with Cassie have sent shockwaves through the media landscape. The accusations range from rape and physical assault to video voyeurism hanging people over balconies and even blowing up the cars of rivals. It's a narrative that goes beyond sensationalism. It is a tale that demands our attention and our scrutiny. Today, we're stepping into the eye of the storm, dissecting the complexities of these startling allegations. We won't shy away from the gravity of the accusations, nor will we succumb to the allure of sensationalism. Instead, we're committed to thoroughly examining this story's facts and implications. Two esteemed guests who bring a wealth of knowledge to the table are with us to lead us through this complex dis discussion. That is none other than the managing editor of the Washington Informer, Misha Green, and of course, the media personality herself uh, from Houston, Totally Randy. What's going on? Hello, hello. Thank you for having us, Stacey. Absolutely. Oh it's, let it's me tell y'all something. Day. It's heavy topics, though. <laughs> yeah, let me let me tell y'all something. Who were watching these? These ladies were loaded for bear this morning. I'm like, wait a minute, calm down. 
<laughs> like they say, I don't know. I don't know when we're not ready. When we're not ready. always ready. I know. They, I, listen, look. they're like they're like Queen Latifah and, and Jada Pinkett. Set it off. They're ready to set it off. <laughs> they're always ready to set it off. But you know what? Know. I'm always ready to protect women. I I'm always that. ready to protect Black women first and foremost. Although yes. I have to say, as an Alpha Kappa Alpha, we always set it off. Come oh, on, come on. Oh, <laughs> always setting it off, huh? I, I tell you, it. I tell you. You know what, Mimi? When I come to Washington, what next week? Uh, what was Denise's thing? Uh, we're we so gonna have some fun week after next december after 2nd next. i believe I, I believe it's the second everybody the second it is it is yes. Saturday night. Washington Associate, association of black journalists honoring a lot of amazing uh journalists in the field on the grind but one of them is our amazing publisher denise for lark barnes so she oh, yeah. can y'all imagine hanging out with mimi on a saturday night oh lord <laughs> Actually, I can't imagine, and it's a good time. Let me I was tell gonna you. say, I was gonna say that there are people to back me up on this call that yes. can say, it, you know, we have a good time. We don't get in trouble, but we, but we might make some good trouble on around the way. Good, yeah, good trouble, huh? trouble. Good oh, trouble. Good trouble. Good trouble. I love it. Listen, uh, Power ninety six said he's ready. He got his Mad Dog twenty twenty. He's ready. He gonna hang out with us too. Perfect. But, but we also have a couple of other uh, before we get into the the Diddy situation. We had a, we got a couple of other uh, things to get into. Um, George Santos, representative from uh, New York, is about to be expelled from from the House. He says he's leaving, but today they're going to take a vote to kick him out. Um, this guy, the House Ethics Committee, found not only did he lie. I mean, this who is he? Is he really George Santos? That's Great. really. <laughs> I mean, he's not the George Santos that people voted for, certainly. It's well, who did they vote for, Mimi? He, this guy was crazy from jump. Well, it sounds like they voted for a liar. We can liar. we can back that up pretty definitively. Um, I mean, Stacey, you've been doing a lot of wonderful reporting yeah. on this pretty much since the beginning. I have to tell you guys, when this first dropped, I would call Stacey laughing almost <laughs> as I was editing his pieces because I could not believe the saga that has been all that's unfolded over months when it comes to George. Uh, it's unbelievable. This guy yeah. served, but this is the this is the circus that Congress has become anyway. I, I was just about to say that, Stacey, between him and the nuck, if you buck senators, <laughs> it's just really, honestly, it's just really just mind blowing to see, you know, what what has become of Congress. It's absolutely mind blowing. Yeah, yeah I mean, come, it, it's. It's like now it, it really, really brings home the point that in, not only can anybody run for Congress or the Senate or whatever, but anybody can win. Right. right. <laughs> right. Have that popularity. Like it's not about it's not about what you're doing for the people. It's not about it's not even about your morals anymore. It's literally just about popularity. Yeah. And Mimi, he um, this is a guy that really he won first. First of all, nobody really knew him before he won, right. but he won right. in a district in New York that's typically Democrat. Well, so that that is one of the things that I was thinking about, even as I was editing your piece uh, yesterday about this new development with Santos, is that. This is an ex exact example of why people need to go out and vote in their municipal elections, why they need to vote in their local elections, why they need to care about what's happening in their districts, because we have this congressional uh, representative who um, swung a district simply because uh, other people didn't really know and were, were ill-informed about other folks, other candidates. Um, yeah. And so, I, I mean, I think that that's one a really good example, as Randy said, uh, when we look at Santos and we look at how he campaigned and we look at the funds that he was able to get and garner and sort of the people he was able to to pull on his team, uh, obviously a good chunk of this uh, came because he was a liar. But the other piece was because it was a popularity contest. Yeah. I mean, he lied about his lies. He lied about his lies <laughs> and, and still is continuing to do so. Right. Um, you know, I mean, even even down to being, you know, Jewish. And, oh God! And, 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 and right, he and, said. You know, he said the, the classic line that most people will remember him by is, "He said, oh wait, I didn't say I was Jewish. I said I was Jew-ish." Yeah, <laughs> it was mind blowing, mind blowing. It's, but but the other thing that I really want to point out, and Stacey reported on this, is that how 
uh, the other House members are particularly concerned because of the mockery that it's making about it, it, in Congress right now. Right. But I'm like, I, that's so funny that this is what's setting y'all off. Right. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm like, no, granted, I'm happy because, you know, ethically speaking, <laughs> I, I agree has to go. Um, I mean, you know, we don't need the people, the, this. Santos did a huge disservice to the voters in his district, the people of his district, because they really didn't get a chance to even know who they were voting for. And one can argue that is uh, maybe the case with a lot of politicians. We don't really know who you're working <laughs> with, right? You think? <laughs> for blatant lies. Um, however, that said, it's a mockery going on in the house. <laughs> or it has guy, well, and this guy is a fugitive from Brazil, too. I mean, Brazil wants him, too. Where's he gonna okay. run to? We we agree on this show. Uh, the, the, myself, Greer, Austin, we all agree this guy's gonna gonna take flight, right? Where is he gonna go though? Because he's wanted internationally. Right. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, this guy is such a good liar. People like that, the, those uh, are really able to sort of be chameleons and work in different spaces. You can't. Yeah. I mean, you know, his values, for example, and this is this uh, is is simply an assumption. We look at his values, right, um, as a representative uh, of the Republican Party, and yet he it has done drag, we know, as a member of the LG. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah, and, then, and then talk <laughs> and talk about folks, talk badly about folks who do um, normally uh, do drag shows or dress in drag, and he has nerve to denounce them, and then Lo and behold, we find out he does it. He, well, does he has it. to rub the backs of his politic, politic, uh, Repub um, Repu Republican Party. I can't talk today. He has to rub the backs of them. So obviously he's, again, when it comes to, like uh, Mimi said, being a chameleon, you do have to blend in with them. But I think him doing drag was just that. That's inside of him. That's yes. Well, right. But why <laughs> condemn others? Right. This guy because is Because you, you have to play up to who you're representing. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I, I, yeah, later on in the in the uh, show, by the way, just so everyone know, we have not forgot, we're going to have a conversation with the harmonicist uh, Frederic Yonet, who is on that great movie. Mimi, I think you've already talked to him. Uh, so, Killers of the Flower Moon. I didn't get to talk to Freddie this time. I Freddie, to look that. at Freddie. She's on a okay. she's, she's on a Freddie basis. On a nickname basis. Excuse, me. Excuse me, but no, I, I I have known him for quite some time. Um, he, this guy has played with Stevie he's Prince. Played, I mean, the greats. Um, on top of being sort of a a an awesome. A uh, musician that introduces others to the world of harmonica. Uh, for, for those that might not have even been coming for a musical show, I've seen Frederick Yanay in a Dave Chappelle <laughs> things, <laughs> and I've seen him uh, on the street. You know, just bust out during the pandemic. He had a really awesome series from his home where people could tap in. Um, and so you know, I'm really excited. I'm glad you get to talk to him. How come uh, everybody, when people, uh, uh, Randy, when, when folks talk about Chappelle, right, the first thing that comes to mind nowadays is all the controversy. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind all the time is when he was like the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Remember oh, that? Right. He was blind. <laughs> this black man, <laughs> Wayne Chappelle's uh, genius. Our genius, yes. he is. He is. And sometimes, with when you know, it's it's so interesting that we say that. Remember when we talked about Kanye a while ago, Stacey? Oh, I believe God. that was. Like but I don't think I don't think we got to worry about that with Chappelle, do we? No, we don't have to worry about it with Chappelle. But again, that controversy comes up because there is a thin line right there that you cross when it comes to having that type of genius. And to me, yeah. Chappelle does have that type of genius. So the controversy is just because, you know, it's just it's a part of their personality. You know, it's it's where their creativity comes from. I'm like the exact opposite. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, think about it. Think about the most. I, about listen, the you, know, you know that saying, Randy, a long time ago, fake it till you make it. Uh, I'm still, I'm still faking. I, I'm, I, you know, some people think I made it, but I don't know. I'm not comfortable saying I made it. I don't so know, Stacey. You, you have a lot of, you have a lot of <laughs> insight. Yeah, you might have made it already. You, you used For to sure. Jackson's house. Like, come on, like, yeah. 
Stay, uh, stay and always and all the time in the right places. You absolutely. Stay. Absolutely. Listen, yes. You guys, speaking of the right places, it may not be the right place today, but our condolences to uh, Dr. Ben Chavis and the Wilmington 10 yes. family uh, funeral services are this morning for James Bunn McCoy, who yes. is a member of that political prisoner group, the Wilmington 10. It's set to, actually, it's this afternoon. 3.30, 3 right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, he died on the 10th. He was just 69 years old. Uh, we didn't uh, get a cause of death, but it's it's another um, another member of that fame group, um, which includes Dr. Chavis, of course, uh, Connie Tindell, Marvin Chili Patrick, Wayne Moore, Reginald Epps, Jerry Jacobs, Willie Earl, uh, Vereen, uh, William Joe Wright Jr. And the one uh, woman in that group who actually, actually is a white woman and Shepherd. They can uh, comprise the Wilmington 10. And um, again, you know, when you start, and, and not that uh, Mr. McCoy was old, 69 is not old, but when you start hitting in your 70s and certainly 80s, it's, it, the world seems to get a little bit lonelier. And this is why you start losing people. Um, and I was talking to Dr. Chavis, I think you spoke to him as well, Randy. Uh, um, Y'all had some communications anyway. Absolutely. As the uh, social media correspondent for Black Press USA, of course, um, I, I asked Dr. Chavis for, um, uh, you know, some audio so that we could send out. And he he definitely did a video. And he talked about, uh, which we will go out today, by the way. And I know you did a story too, Stacey. So I want to pair that with that so you guys can go and read more on him. But uh, Dr. Chavis did send uh, his condolences through video. You guys will see that if you go to Black Press USA um, and follow us at Black Press USA, you'll be able to see that today. And he talked about some amazing memories. And that's a hard time. You know, that's a hard time. Like we look at it in all honesty, we look at it as a piece of history. We look at it like, oh, they were activists. But could, could you imagine going through what they went through at that time? So young and so, right. so young. Right. You know, right. I think 19. Yeah. Um, well, yes, when he was he, sent to prison. Yeah. To prison yes. You you just, you know, again, when I saw that he was 69, I'm like 50 years later. Yeah. yeah. And knowing how long he served, that would have been, you know, he only they really spent had almost a decade in prison. Right. So that's yes. like 41 years of his of his adult life that he was given post this, you know, unjust um, sentence and really you know, continues to system systemically racist uh, world that he, he continued to navigate. But you also talked about, you know, how lonely the world starts to get around you and uh, as you age. And uh, first of all, I want to send my condolences to Dr. Chavis and all those uh, um, who loved um, Mr. McCoy. But I also want to say that Dr. Chavis and a lot of these freedom fighters have seen their comrades mm -hmm. falling since they were young. Yeah. Um, and that is so, I, I mean, one, I think it's just something that we have to acknowledge, but two, really celebrate the fact that these freedom fighters have continued to be bold and be on the front lines like Dr. Chavis, despite the fact that for years their uh, fellow activists um, have have been unfortunately uh, persecuted in, in in such ways that they either were killed um, or or have have died from natural causes over the years. Um, and so I think I just want to say kudos to Dr. Chavis and all those that continue in the fight. Um, and I know the picture is not big enough, but I just have to say, Dr. Chavis, boy, you look like you good in there. Look I know. Like, can, I say, can I also say this one thing? Um, because when I when I listen to um, you know, when I watched Dr. Chavis uh, put out his statement and he sent that to me yesterday, I thought about something. You know, prison is not a timeout. No. And he talked about how uh, a James, Mr. McCoy was um, a, a great instrumentalist. He was a guitarist. Yes. And he talked about that. And he's and I thought to myself, imagine being so young and, and loving something so greatly. And then you're sent to prison yeah. for a decade. And that is drained out of you and your mental is drained out of you. And so to see Dr. Chavis and, and the others, you know, come out and continue to fight 
where do you pull that from when you are sent to prison? Yeah. And that, that prison is nowhere. You know, we talk about prison reform even to this day. Mm -hmm. So it's no place to be and, and to actually continue to thrive. So when you come out and you're still fighting, Dr. Chavis donated his life yeah. to civil rights. You know, well, and he's fighting for it. To, to you your know? point, um, Dr. Chavis, uh, uh, Randy, to your point, he's uh, in his, in his uh, statement, he said he was uh, talking about Mr. McCoy. He was a master bass guitarist who would always play the right beat with the inspiring music of freedom is what yeah. Dr. Chavis said. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And, and, and imagine, just imagine that, imagine getting having that beat out of you almost being in prison. Imagine what he went through in prison, you know? Um, and that's very hard to, to come out and to continue that fight. And so I tip my hat, like I literally, like I'm always in so much awe of yeah. seeing uh, ones like Dr. Chavis and, and, you know, all of his peers that are fighting for civil rights that continue in this fight. Mimi was in awe of seeing Dr. Chavis' picture back from 1971. I, look, I, I mean, I almost was. Look, I, I have to say, sir. There he is. But yeah, y'all look at Y'all see it. Y'all see it. <laughs> and my man, our man still look good, doesn't he, Mimi? And he still looks amazing. He makes 75 yeah. look really good, babe. Look, uh -oh. Dr. Chavis look out. Has, has the swag uh, that we all, that everybody should should envy y'all talk about that. i don't know how i should feel Absolutely. about you talking about dr chavis well, look, let me place. let me just say i don't know how i should feel about people it. people talk about the denzel walk right the obama walk right dr chavis has a walk and he's smooth with with his voice <laughs> oh so, so there's, I, the dr. there's the dr chavis walk there's the dr chavis walk there's the dr chavis uh <laughs> delivery and i think you know of course it's because of his passion and Absolutely. his dedication uh, that he has had the um, the authority, but also the in incredible amount of respect that he's had over the yes. years in this fight. Uh, but I also want to say, passion. because, I, you know, doc Dr. Chavis, uh, you know, was armed always, as we see in this picture, with the um, understanding that things were not going to be easy. Things were not going to be fair. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know, uh, as, as much as I've read this story and <laughs> Austin says, I sure hope Doc's listening. I hope Doc's listening too. <laughs> uh, he, he deserves his flowers like every, every single day because he's still on the front lines. Yeah. And like, and like Mimi said, that passion that he gives to it, knowing that it's not going to be easy, knowing that he's still, Facing, there's the, the struggle continues. He says it all the time. What do you say? Aluta continua. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all, um, just so y'all two will know, uh, Power 96, while I know he likes y'all, he is looking for, as he says, the red bone. He says that she has three and a half million views of a selfie of herself by, alone. <laughs> You know who he's talking about, right? Yes. Miss, 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 Miss drinking water. Miss, Miss drinking water. Don Montgomery. <laughs> so, so somebody must amazing. follow her on. on, on yeah, TV. exactly. Tell them to stop stalking, Dawn. That, that's exactly what the case is. <laughs> <laughs> I, <love it. laughs> Listen, I, I want to ask Power96, did you ask her if it's okay to call her the red bone? Look, I, uh -oh. I, I wasn't going to even take it there because, look. He I, always look, calls her the red bone. I mean, I love that he's a fan, but, you know, get her permission to call her that. What look, if she it, doesn't like it? it, 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 it he doesn't it, care. Well, I can tell you right look, now, he's got his Obama flip phone going right now, right? He got the, the welfare cheese that he's proud of. And he's, and he's chewing on that with some crackers, Ritz maybe, or that saltines or whatever he's doing. And he's gonna he's preparing to watch some HBCU football this weekend. Stacy, that does not sound like a compliment. I'm like, it is a compliment. He'll tell you it's a compliment. He got all he got about a million and a half bucks stash under his mattress because he won't go to the bank. I mean, we know about Power 96. Well, here's the real compliment, me. Power 96. Thank you for- Oh, for Dr. Chavis is watching. Hi, Doc. We love you so much. Thank you. And again, condolences to yes. you. Um, we're sending our, our major love. Um, that, that, uh, Power 96 says he's an old school player. He said he calls it as he sees it. See, well, Power 96. Let's call it as we see it. Old school players have been getting in trouble a whole lot. He here. ain't getting in no trouble. Power 96 is not getting in that type of trouble. Look, and no, no, no. And that's fine. But I think that we do have to just watch, you know, what we what we consider as, uh, 
you know, has been tradition or a norm and expected right. and accepted because things change and how people react. Um, and so, and, and so while I completely get it, Power 96, and I love that you love Don because I am one of Don's biggest fans as well. Yeah. Um, and I hope you love me and Randy too, because we showing up and trying to give you a good show as well. Oh, God. Um, this, but, has, this has just totally gone the other but way. I also <laughs> want, no, but I think that it, it, you know, we're looking at these conversations like Diddy. Uh, where, right. And, and I think that as we, and no, I'm not comparing you to Diddy Power 96. But I think. <laughs> I, but I think that what we need to do is acknowledge that things that, you know, may have just sort of been able to slide by or have were Absolutely. Um, some people will call out these days. That That's yes. all I am there's saying. There's a shift. And that's all we're saying, that there's a shift in our environment. And it's it's we have to shift along with it. And so that's why I said she might love you calling her that, but as her fan, you know, get her permission. Cause what if that, what if that could be. Power 96 is not getting any permission. Well, I'm, is only not because, doing that. And, and that's, and that's fine. But I think to the point, you know, I mean, let, let's call it, let's call it as we, as we're talking about it. Uh, Cause we're here today and now we're here. So right. the fact <laughs> of the matter is, is that right now Redbone is not, it, not necessarily a, a <laughs> said, you know, or a compliment. <laughs> yeah, people are offended by it. No matter Chris if y'all mess with my girl money. She said, cut it out. <laughs> I don't so think listen, anybody can mess with that bag we, that Dawn is in, baby. Before we Dawn move has on, a God. deep bag. <laughs> yeah, she does. Listen, before we move on, we will, uh, you know, again, our condolences to the Wilmington 10 family and Absolutely. James uh, 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 Bun McCoy. Dr. Chavis says he's on a plane to Wilmington um, right now as, as we speak uh, for uh, Mr. McCoy's home go going memorial. Uh, Doc, safe travels. And again, travels. Uh, we are all thinking about you and that vast uh, civil rights family that you have. Um, and so um, as we, we, we close that out, now, folks, you know, this is disturbing on one million levels yes. the document you know it's i encourage folks when we have when there are cases like this and we went through it um you know, not to make comparisons um but in covering even the bill cosby case look at what is a what's in the court documents what everyone's filed what they their responses and and more importantly what they say under oath and i say that to say also that when you file a court document and a deposition, that's, a deposition is under oath. So with that in mind, as Power 96 says, that Johnny Cochran is not here to defend uh, either him or Diddy right now. Uh, <laughs> Diddy needs Johnny Cochran to the 10th power because the producer and music mogul, who has been one of the most famous names in hip hop for decades, perhaps one of the most, he, not perhaps, he is one of the most famous names in the history of hip hop. Well, he right. was sued yesterday by Cassie, as you guys know by now. And um, the suit, what is written and what is written in a deposition taken by, uh, uh, taken of Cassie is no, no less than, to say that is shocking is an understatement. We're talking about not just uh, physical abuse, sexual assault, but even hiring people to sexually assault her on a regular basis. Um, we're talking about one aspect has been confirmed by another party involved, which is ordering um, that Kid Cudi, when he started dating Cassie, to have his car uh, blown up, literally, like he's like uh, Michael Corleone from The Godfather, and it was blown up. And Cudi, in a statement to the New York Times yesterday, confirmed that, yes, that did happen. Um, Mimi, Randy, I know that Y'all been loaded for bear on this conversation. So uh, whoever wants to kick it off, uh, go ahead and, as y'all said, set it off. I'll give it to Mimi first. Oh, why? I was just about to say I'm giving it to Randy. First of all, <laughs> I, I want to say this because I love Shanae Brown. How are you? I, I, not more than Stacey Brown, of course. Let me not try, <laughs> try, try, try to up, up him this morning. Um, but Shanae just said he should be careful with the female labels. And that's exactly what I was saying before. That, right. That's all I was talking about because uh, that it continues to get 
uh, folks in trouble when we try to label anyone male or female. I've been saying, <laughs> I've been seeing it's particularly on the internet. That said, whoo. <laughs> she, she, she went down south on us. Woo, chow. <laughs> Woo, chow. Yes. Um, so I, first of all, I want to say um, kudos to Cassie for uh, coming out and uh, expressing something that she clearly um, has been holding on to for years. Um, per per uh, conversations we had offline, this is not new. Uh, she had filed um, charges against uh, Diddy in 2018, I believe. Um, and the allegations just like almost at, per your point, Stacey, it, it's almost mob-like. It, it does not seem like that of the mogul um, and celebrated star that Sean Diddy Combs is, at least to take it to that point, such as blowing up cars, uh, human trafficking, um, and, and sexual harassment. Diddy has had a long history of having interesting relationships that people question the power dynamic there. Um, one, Diddy and Cassie are 17 years apart, and um, we know that not in, in all cases, but sometimes when there is a major age gap like that, um, there can be questions about power, um, but then, and grooming in the case of Diddy and Cassie. Um, but then we also add the piece about the fact that Diddy was a star already. He was already a mogul at the time of them dating. Um, and so I, I just want to start before we even get into the nitty gritty of it, um, of giving kudos to Cassie and saying mm -hmm. that Diddy has a long history of this. And so I'm not, not yeah. denying it. I'm not so, denying it. So before we, before we throw it to you, Randy, just a couple of quick things on it too. The thing, some of the more, uh, again, a couple of things that's disturbing, like for instance, she, she said that, you know, he would have her carry his gun in her purse. And, and we remember when he was dating Jennifer Lopez, when they got arrested in New York, um, right. she had the gun for Diddy, J Jennifer Lopez did and, and, and nearly, uh, and did take a gun charge. Um, there was, uh, the, uh, as you said, him being the, the mogul, the boss, right. which makes it immediately inappropriate. Right. Um, but this idea of hanging someone over the balcony, you remember the five heartbeats, right? Mm -hmm. Where there's a, they're seeing where big red holds, uh, the artist over the balcony, threatens to drop him off the balcony. These guys all too often, and it happens Probably in other genres too, but certainly in the hip hop, they all in the hip hop uh, sphere, they all too often try to imitate, in, in my estimate, and I love a lot of these guys, but they try to imitate all too often the 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 mobster guys, the, the the things that they've seen in the movies. Like you've seen so many hip hop guys uh, lord and big up the movie Scarface, right? The world is right. mine and things, you know, and they try to actually live that instead of, you know, to, to, and I know Randy will be happy about this, like Jay-Z, for instance, who I have <laughs> a myriad of problems with, but from all that we've seen of Jay-Z, for instance, this guy, he, 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 he lives a life in which he's not jeopardizing any of what he's built, Right. He's not trying to play a role that's going to get him in the crosshairs of law enforcement or a case like this. That we know of. That, that we, we know, know of, right. Because right. I do want to say, you know, as because I said earlier that we didn't expect of, there, we know that still in the hip hop game, there are... Um, uh, and maybe in business in general, from what I from what I hear from the words on the street, um, that there right. can be a level of uh, some shady business that can happen or maybe illegal things. We you know, we're looking at what's happening in Fulton County in Atlanta. And I'm like thinking, well, why are these guys? Why did you know these guys have to be involved in any, you know, illegal uh, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. crime or, or, or things or, you know, kind of hustler or gangster business as they're now millionaires? Um, and so I don't you know, I don't know what goes on the business in the business that that has to happen. Um, but, you know, for whatever reason, 
throughout decades at this point of, of Diddy's career, he's felt like he's had to keep that bad boy persona that includes staying armed, that includes, uh, you know, in, in ensuring that people know not to mess with him, even as he's, you know, his new name is Love, right? Uh, oh, but even as, as, as he's- How many people get texts from Diddy? I get texts from Diddy all the time look, with that Love a, stuff. A, sir, how do you get texts from Diddy? Oh, oh, every day almost. He's sending like this, this, this uh, start your day this way type thing. And it's always love. He's always love. Everything love. Well, are you well, subscribed well, to his, you know, his fan base text messages? You need us? to tell us everything. You must know more right. than you give us. <laughs> no, I don't. You have but, to know more but, than But, but yeah, I mean, he's, it's every day. It's like, oh, the stars are bright for you and this and that and uh, blah, blah, blah. And, and, and remember, it's all love. This is every day. It's all, I like, I try to block it. <laughs> this is why we said that you've made it, Stacey, because you get text right. messages from Diddy. Well, we, we did Diddy on the program. But <laughs> and, no, and, that you know, said, I, I would be, if you, if you received one this morning, I'm highly surprised because if I was Diddy or any part of his team, um, all of his phones would be null and void. Uh, you don't know who's recording. Diddy probably phone is not calls looking. Recording. He, he's probably not listening to anyone. That's why he's in, right. the, in the trouble he's in. But, but Randy, though, let's, let's, let's talk about it, though, because now he isn't he dating the young girl they call a young miami uh, um and um well according to young miami and diddy uh according to carisha please this is something that's documented they go together real bad um <laughs> I, I do want to say i do want to start by saying everything so that no one can say um you know that that i am making a statement everything that we are saying please put allegedly in front. I want to put that out there first so I don't have to say allegedly again. Just preface everything I'm saying with allegedly, okay? Because I wasn't there as as, as important as Stacy is and as connected as he is, he wasn't there with Diddy. Oh, I, 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 would, I would have helped Cassie out. I would not have allowed right. it. Yeah. Just you know, retroactively, so, I'm allegedly as well. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I cited the court documents. Everything we're saying allegedly. is cited in the court documents, pretty much. But go ahead, absolutely. Already. Now, I will say this: you know, when you look at their history, there is a timeline of when they got together. First of all, when you're 37 years old, uh, 30, 30, 36, 37, 35, 37, I don't care, and you're dating a 19 year old okay um that that we're gonna start is is just very uh weird um and then when we go through what's in the court documents when we go through what she is alleged you know allegedly happening you know what she is saying uh such as the male prostitutes that's let, so let's talk about it right mm -hmm. uh recording her with male prostitutes and, why why do you think that was the case randy well, she she says it. He's pleasuring himself while while she's doing this. And okay, so but but okay. Let's break it down, though, uh, Randy. Yeah, she she says eventually he get he starts doing that, right? On right. Uh, but but why did it start? I have a theory as to why it started. When you think about when you try to get in the mindset of someone who we uh, that has been painted a picture, this, this mindset that we have of Diddy. Um, I'm going to say control. I'd love control. to hear your theory. There you go. But I'm going to say control. Everything that he's doing is controlling. The the, the her carrying the gun, gun. This is also in the court documents. Forcing mm -hmm. her to carry carry the gun. Uh, controlling. You know, um, when we talk about, when she talks about introducing her to a life of a substance abuse. You know, I, I'm not I'm not going to say that. You know, women don't like to drink. Obviously, women but the like substance to drink. abuse, Every Randy. Uh, but why? Because look what he was allegedly, again, what the court documents say he was Absolutely. putting her through. And then when you look at it, you know, there is, a there is, and I do want to say this, there is a, uh, everybody was doing their timelines, okay? Every, from, from hiphoponline.com <laughs> to Billboard, everybody was doing a timeline of Diddy and Cassie. And it, it's, it's because, you know, their, their relationship was very, very public. But I do want to point something out, okay? Now, this is from Billboard.com. Um, their first breakup in 2015, and we also know that in 2016, there is a huge uh, picture that went that went viral. How Beyonce celebrated her VMAs, her big VMA time. 
time. And there's a picture of uh, it's it's Beyonce and Jay Z. I believe it's Kim and Kanye, and then there's Diddy and Cassie, right? And at this time, the controlling Diddy, right, around this time, had given her like an engagement ring. Now they did not they did not come out and say that they were engaged. They did not publicly say that they were engaged. But again, that engagement ring comes out around this time. That's 2016. The picture takes place. But look what happened in 2015. In 2015, according to page six, the power couple split, right? Now, in the interview with The Breakfast Club, Diddy shares his 2575 relationship rule. He says, if I'm in a relationship with you, like 25% of your time, you're going to feel just like, oh, man, I hate being here. This guy, oh, he cheated on me. I'm fed up with him. He lied to me. But then there's 75%. I'm going to make you the happiest woman in the world. And I promise you, you're going to smile the most. That is a quote taken from his interview, right? Now, when you look at that controlling piece, if they took, if they broke up at that time, and then he turns around and gives her this ring that he put out on his Instagram, hey, baby, do you like it? And she's wearing it in 2016. And by the way, I, 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 only reason I'm interrupting you is we do have some breaking news on that situation. The New York City Police Department says have confirmed now that they are investigating a criminal complaint against Puffy Combs. Right. Regarding she filed sexual a civil. assault. Yeah, so right. we do we do have that breaking news that New York City police have confirmed that they yeah. are and have been not. This is not they're They're making it underlining that it is not uh, didn't happen yesterday. Didn't happen last week. Right. But they have been investigating Diddy combs for sexual assault slash rape so there 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 you have it and that's also in, her is civil, in trouble that's also in her civil case that that uh when they broke up i don't know which time because again the 2015 was their first breakup Right. Then after 2015, their second breakup came in 2016, which was interesting because it was after that ring situation and everybody thought they were engaged. And here you have Beyonce and Jay-Z who were married. You have Kim and Kanye who were married. And then you have Diddy and, and Cassie. And so their second breakup comes in 2016. Right. And then when they finally broke up in 2018, which Mimi had pointed out earlier, that's when Cassie filed the lawsuit. Um, you know, we know what happened with, with him harassing her husband and harassing her, even giving her a happy birthday, my love, you know, on mm -hmm. his Instagram that, you know, Cassie talks about when they broke up him, you know, uh, raping her in her home. And so th this is, you know, all of this is very, very uh, disturbing. Um, again, you know, Stacy, you mentioned it earlier, like we we have the uh, Kiki Palmer and Darius situation that, you know, uh, allegedly that had been going on since they started dating. Then we have what's going what is going on with men and power and control. So let me ask you this, uh, Mimi. OK, so Cassie uh, now and, and the suits, um, it also mentions um, and this is one of the things apparently that the New York uh, police is investigating 2018 after they broke up. Um, he, um, I, the whole blowing up uh, of Cuddy's car happened before that, but they are also apparently investigating that too. Cause, uh, and, and the complaint does mention something about arson, but the 2018, um, uh, after they broke up, she says that, um, he, um, broke into her home and raped her, right. Which goes back to Randy's point about control, but let me ask you this. So at what point people, there are still those who say, um, well, what took you so long? If it was true, why did you say it then? Tell us, this This is a woman, Mimi, who is married now with two children. Randy said she has two children. Uh, I thought she had one, but she has two. Um, and um, now she comes out, uh, you know, a few years later. It's not 20 years later. It's only a few years later. 2018 is, you know, five years ago. Right. What, what could prompt or what normally does from in your experience as as a journalist a top i mean not only she's a great editor but she's a top notch top notch journalist but in your experience covering things like this or and and, and being in the media what prompts a woman to come forward at this point so thank you for that question, Stacey, because I am ready for the people to say, oh, well, of course, she's saying this after he won all these awards and Hip Hop 50 and the, uh, what is it, the 30th anniversary of Bad, Bad Boy, Boy yeah. um, and all of that. 
um, you know, I, I'm ready for for the deniers and the haters and the critics to try to distract from what Cassie is saying. And I often find that when you're talking about these situations, that it goes beyond the what people know to be right or wrong or legal instances, and they're dealing with their own emotions. It took, uh, you know, first of all, let's remember Cassie did uh, file a lawsuit in 2018. So it's not like she wasn't dealing Well, it wasn't a lawsuit. It was a police complaint. Oh, a police complaint. Which is which is probably more powerful and important. Than a suit, right, because we're not talking money. We're uh, Thank you for correcting me. We're talking about somebody saying that there, there's a problem. Um, but I, that said, um, I, I think that it took years. I mean, they had a very long relationship and it took years for Cassie to understand what's happening. She's 37, the age I believe Diddy was when they started dating. Um, and so we know the maturity that happens in that time from 19 to 37 and the things that she's realizing, the things that she understands about adulthood and the things that she might be understanding about what happened to her. On top of the fact that um, with all of the power dynamics and challenges that were uh, allegedly uh, a part of their relationship, we can't say or deny that there wasn't some level of love there. Um, and so she also had to like deal with the breakup. Uh, she had to deal with, I am no longer with this man, uh, deal with the change of uh, her lifestyle and where she had access to being Diddy's plus one as opposed to Cassie. It's me and you, you know, remind me of the other tunes that she she hit back in the day. You know, it, I think that at the time, people, who, as much as they love her, people felt that a lot of her weight came from, which is completely unfair, but her relationship with Diddy. And, and so can I she, ask yeah. a question? I, mean, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt, but I would like to ask a question for those who say what took her so long. There are a plethora amount of, of human beings out here that have trauma in their past life that they haven't even reached out to a therapist about right now. Right. Well, let's, even let's uh, Randy, even um, Shanae is writing in. She says that there's no time limit on a person revealing their trauma. We always lump in the legal time limits, but we have to respect her building up the strength to tell the truth about their relationship and the abuse. And Shanae or, or is even knowing that it was problematic because I, right. I I think about how young she was and right. not acknowledging that some of these things were wrong, you know? Yes. So, yeah. And shout out to Shanae, because that's exactly what I was saying. Like when you ask that question for the, for the people out there who ask that question, think about your own trauma. If you've experienced it, think about things that you haven't handled in your life. You know, we, we, especially in the black community, let's just be honest, you know, mental health is still kind of taboo around our community. You know, we yeah, are just that's so now true. exploring it. We are just now exploring how to handle our trauma. Number one, that's number one. Let's set that aside. Also the, the word that we're not saying the quiet word we're not saying loudly intimidation in mm -hmm. 2022 diddy receives a bet lifetime award and who does he thank he thanks cassie for holding him down during what those dark times okay he thanks her so that that type of intimidation that he's been and what was so dark about him from his point of view right well what we thought what the audience thought it had to right. be thoughts of kim porter but right. now we know we know what was in there. It was loaded. And, you know, again, right. allegedly there were rumors back then um, about you know his situation with Kim too. So this is not it, again. It's not necessarily caught off uh, guard by these allegations. Uh, Power right. ninety six cents though, and it, and 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 I hear what he's saying, and I'm I'm gonna lift it up. Um, listen to his whole comment though. He says, "Now, what about the extortion from the women?" He says, "And no, I am not defending Diddy now." He might be referring to, you remember in the opening, I talked about Tiger Woods' girlfriend. Right. And what happened there, right? When you have, so so that's this is what makes it more difficult, right? When you have women like that, Tiger Woods' girlfriend or ex-girlfriend, who um, holler sexual assault when they can't get their way. It's, isn't it, how damaging, you, you guys can speak to it, of course, better, but how damaging is that uh, when you have someone who has to come back and admit they lied. My answer or get caught out the line. 
my answer is really quick. Number one, thank you, Power96, for saying that because that's always in the back of people's head. But I'm going to make this quick answer. When, when I can't think of her name right now, but when old girl from Alabama, when she did that false uh, kidnapping report, the thing that I said is that I hope no one, I will never take it lightly when someone is kidnapped. I will never not share when someone is kidnapped to find that person because one person lied. I don't care if a million people lie. If if a person is kidnapped, I'm always going to share it. If a person, we're looking for a person, I'm always going to share it. So what I would say to that, Power 96, is every person is different and every person is an individual. And I'm not putting uh, Tiger Woods' ex-girlfriend on Cassie's Cassie's uh, incident because Cassie is an individual and she and she it deserves for her case to be taken as an individual because what's a allegedly put in those court documents is very very disturbing and it's not and it's important it, it is important to note that Benjamin Braffman and I'm surprised he's still around uh he uh in a statement said that that they vehemently uh vehemently how have you say that word Mimi denies these <laughs> offensive and outrageous allegations and accused Cassie of being persistent and demanding more. Now there's two reports here, right? Conflicting reports. One says that that um and, and Power 96 references it, that uh she wanted 30 million uh for Diddy tried to extort him for 30 million for the last six months. But another report suggests that Diddy offered her 30 million to make this go away. And she's not 30. No. He did he did offer her eight figures. It wasn't 30 though. It wasn't well, 30. The, uh, unless you know the figure, um, Randy, I'm not trying to correct you, but the right. figure from what I see in the lawsuit is 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 hidden. If we don't know, we do know it's eight right. figures. But here, there's two reports that I saw. One that he's referencing, um, which Ben Braffman claims that uh, Cassie was demanding thirty million dollars, and another report says that he was Diddy was actually offering her thirty million dollars, and she was the one who said no. But that's interesting because if she said no, then why is it thirty million now? That just really doesn't well, make well sense. the point is the point is that there's a 30 million dollar figure whether she asked for it or he offered it is right. out there and 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 I you know and you guys again speak to it if she didn't if she said no to a 30 million dollar settlement then it must tell us something right well it, it it certainly gives us a hint into where Cassie is emotionally and where she and what she's attempting to do which is get some level of justice some level of fair trials some not about money in other words it's right? not about money um and, and I think that we at least need to pay attention to this as Randy said we none of us were there um none of us really know you know, exactly what happened, but we can see some of the trends and the way that the dots connect and um, not to completely shift gears, but in uh, last week, Stacey tweeted us about uh, Kiki Palmer and looking at some of the, the signs leading up to what we mm -hmm. now know as um, Kiki's complaints uh, against Darius and, and restraining order against him. Um, and we all- well, I hope Usher uh, reached out to her, but go ahead, Mimi. Well, well look, Usher and Kiki are, are good. We know, we well, know- what I, what I mean though, is that, could you imagine um, Mimi, what happened the next time? Based on if everything she says is true, and I have no reason to doubt Kiki Palmer, because again, Kiki also has video and photos to back up her story, Right. but- um, if, if, if all that is true, can you imagine this guy, this jerk tweets out when she's with us? Oh, but you a mom, though. Imagine when he when she got home. Well, I mean, I know I, 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 I think that that's the, the scary part is that we look at this public manipulation like Diddy, because we now see signs of that if we really try to connect. Right. The dots, but we look at this, you know, these public outcries, which really is just being manipulative. Um, and we don't know what's happening behind closed doors. But Stacey um, and Mimi, don't we see when it comes to extortion, don't we see usually the money is offered, let's just say 10 million, right? And then we see an increase. No, I don't want 10 million, I want 30. So I'm just I, I, not to go back to that, Stacey, but I'm just confused mm -hmm. as to if he offered 30, why would she say, no, I'm going to pursue this? I'm right. Because it's not about this. money. It's not it's about a high amount of 30. 
True. I, and I agree with that. Also, I did want to point out really quickly, uh, Dawn from Dirty Money, which is which is on yes. which is on uh, Love's Brother Love, uh, Diddy's new album, uh, love. the Love album. <laughs> Uh, Dirty Money is on that album. Now, Dawn uh, Rashad literally do not speak. She does not say anything. Yeah. And for her and Aubrey O'Day to come out and support Cassie and call her brave. Yeah. How do you say a mouthful without saying a mouthful? No, I, I think that's a really good point because first of all, Danity Kane, Diddy Dirty Money, which is, of course, as, as I celebrate them now and how love has featured them even most recently, right. uh, I think has had, they've rolled with Diddy because he really in many ways helped them in their career. Um, we know, I mean, making the band was legendary. It kind of, I, I interviewed Dawn a few months ago and I told her like, girl, you were like my first like reality TV, like person, you know, that I was a fan yes. of, like doing your moves and stuff like that, <laughs> um, you know, uh, and, and, and so I, I think that for them, it was so bold and so brave because they are, you know, they are talented people without Diddy, I'm sure, but in terms of their recognition and, and a star power, a lot of that was intertwined with Diddy. And so I think if they were bold enough to say something, they're also, we can, we can say as the audience that maybe something odd is maybe something. Yeah. Mm. Maybe something. Yeah. And, and the, the fact, the fact of the matter is uh, we're here or they are there for a reason. Um, there was behavior that again, you, you get to a point and I guess you are who you are, but you get to, you, you would think, you get to a point, and again, I mentioned Jay-Z early because I think that he is uh, reached a point where he said, you know what? I have too much to lose to mm -hmm. engage in this type of foolery. Um, but many of them don't seem to reach that point, uh, Randy and, and, and Mimi, that they feel like I did it when I was you know, coming up. I did it when I was 21. I, I'm going to do it when I'm 40. Mm -hmm. um, and it, this stuff... I don't get it. I, I just don't get other than, as we said earlier, that, that word again, that, that control, right? You, it's, you they, they try to control these women. Yeah. And you know, uh, uh, producer Greer, I love to call her that. Uh, she <laughs> talks about Kid Cudi's uh, car blowing up and I'm always listen. <laughs> I have, Twitter has changed the way society see things. I'm never going to call it X. So yes, it is Twitter. Uh -huh. Twitter ha has changed the way uh, society responds to things. And um, they, it, it, the jokes are flying left and right. Okay. <laughs> and Kid Cudi actually, Lee, again, we weren't there you it's go, you're gonna have you to that picture, show that picture again. you need the evidence right but him saying wow. yeah around that same time that cassie alleges that diddy told her he was going to blow her car up because you know this is you're involved with this guy his car blew up yeah his car blew up and that's that's insane and, and, and cutty cutty confirmed it yesterday to do something like that you feel invincible to your point stacy to your point these guys feel invincible but when you get with someone like a Beyonce, let's go ahead and quote it. Keep it 100, hit the lottery. That's what Jay-Z says about his wife. Yeah. But is it more about her than about him? Like I said, um, it's saying, the influence. you know what? It's the influence. It's the influence okay, of the wife you. saying, hey, my team around me know not to speak. They know not to talk. They know to scrub the internet to pull my, my ugly pictures from the Super Bowl off. They know that when when it when it went down in that elevator, all you had was an audio, no audio video of Solange and Jay Z. No one in that camp spoke a word, and so it's the influence of a good wife. Should I know? Well, well, let me say this. I, I, I let me say. Wait, wait, just one disclaimer though, Randy. I, I get what you're saying. I don't disagree. But when, around that time, I did some reporting, and I was able to talk to some people in that camp, and I did some stories. Um, of, around that, um, but of course they were speaking on the condition of anonymity. But right. um, we, I did, I was able to, and I'm sure I wasn't the only uh, reporter at the time was able to pull some things out of there um, that that actually happened that many didn't know. We had a couple of really 
um, at the time, uh, the, the publication I was writing it for had, a, you know, we were able to get a couple of really amazing exclusives. And, and in fact, um, one of um, the publicists, I, I don't remember which one, I have to go back and look, whether it was Jay-Z's publicist, Solange's publicist, or Beyonce's publicist did uh, pretty much uh, confirm by saying, um, look, you know, this is a personal uh, a matter. You guys should stop, leave us alone. Uh, and whoever you're talking to, they, what, what she said was, whoever you are talking to, um, once we find out, they will be dismissed. So wow. um, we were able to infiltrate uh, that that web there. But, right. I, I but, was but that confirming, but you guys confirmed what they probably put in their in their albums. No, no, we were able to do. I was able to do some reporting to find out some things over there at the Met that, you know, that Shoot they didn't want out. That, so but I just, so I, and it's not to my horn. I, I, yeah. I'm just saying I'm just saying that there are leaks. But Absolutely. I get Absolutely. what you're saying that released, that he right. they have they 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 do have such a closed uh a circle there that it's extremely it's mission impossible to infiltrate it. Yeah. And and I think and that's his, what I was saying. Like and, and mm -hmm. producer Greer said that she was like, there's a lot of evidence already in the public. Right. And that and that's what I was saying. And I'm not I'm not uh, cutting to your your journalism work, Stacey. No, no, not at all. I didn't take it as that. I was just saying that I right. agree with you for the most part. Um, right. I just wanted to put some more perspective in that. But I, I, what I was saying, Mimi and um, Randy, is that I think, Jay, in other words, this man has grown up. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. But, but I, I, what, the one thing that I want to say um, is that, yes, he's grown up and we have to, to point that out and give him props for that. But I think that this situation with Diddy, with uh, Darius... I'm going to call him Darius Palmer because I can't think of his last name. Right? Jackson. Darius Jackson. <laughs> Kiki, Kiki's like, no, please don't do that. <laughs> um, look, Darius Jackson, I, I should have known that because Sharon is, is his brother, um, is that we, our Black men, our men in general, really need to talk more about mental health mm -hmm. and really addressing that because we look at the power dynamic and the difference between a uh, even a Carisha and, and Diddy and um, Kiki and Darius. Kiki was the breadwinner. Kiki was the star. Kiki right. was. I, the, listen, I was like, was listen, you can dance with Usher, whoever you want all night long. You were making all that money. <laughs> I'm taking care of the baby. Like he said, I'm taking care of the baby. I'm that. But to Randy's point, Kiki was the lottery. If we're looking at at um, at this relationship, and yet manipulation was still a factor, right. mm -hmm. yet harassment seem is allegedly a factor in both cases, and so I, I you know, we're looking at a, a personal trainer versus one of uh, the biggest moguls of our day, um, and yet um, there are challenges that I think. We, we can't deny that there's some sort of correlation to mental health there. Um, and so while the, these uh, allegations are problematic, while I think that these men, if the allegations are true, need to uh, be held accountable, I also think that we have to continue this conversation about mental health. And isn't it a self-esteem issue too on the women's part? Is there a self-esteem issue there? No. I, I mean, that no. Way? I, I, I don't think it's even fair to say people have uh, in, to 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 um, assume whether or not there's a self-esteem issue there. People have self-esteem issues, mm -hmm. uh, male or female. Um, but I do think that um, we all can talk about the conversation around mental health and and put both men and women in that category because uh, when we know that we might be being harassed, right? Um, or when we when we can have that healthy understanding that we're in a toxic relationship, that self-esteem or not, then a, a woman or a man has the ability to say, I have to stop this and remove myself. That's so the part. I think yeah. that, it, you know, no matter who's dealing with whatever sorts of issues, uh, mental health is a conversation. That I, and I think to your point, Stacey, I think I know what you're saying, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to these men, absolutely a self-esteem. They take accountability for their action. They're not being, they're not being unchecked 
you know, um, when, mm -hmm. when, especially in the case of Darius, you know, it came out that, you know, Kiki Palmer's mom was saying that he allegedly did some things to his sister, that he's been acting this way for a long time. So when these people, when you don't check the actions, your actions are unchecked. Think about Diddy, uh, Misa, you know, think, think about it. So a, a, a long line and history of people that are not checking when your actions are not checked. You it's almost like you're Magneto. You're absorbing the power and then you're just literally wielding your power as you will uh, uh, against everyone. And right. so sometimes that's very hard when you're when you're uh, uh, amassing that amount of power and, and wealth and nobody is checking you. So let me ask you, you, you both a question. Um, not that uh, you have been victim in that lawsuit. It's it, it, and I've never seen a lawsuit like this before in the sense that it had. In the, if you could see those red letters, it says right. trigger warning. Yeah. But um, but let me ask you both. Not that, uh, and I, I'd hope that neither one of you were are victims of any type of assault. I'm, don't answer that question. It's not in my business. Right. I'm not asking for that. But um, what's her road to recovery look like? Well, I think that if she's had the courage to come out and do this, then she's already on the road to healing. And so I am uh, sending her and everybody involved nothing but prayers. Mm -hmm. um, and when we look at things like this, I, you know, again, I am not at all um, team Diddy, but based off of these allegations. Right. But I want to say prayers should be ascending uh, for him, to him and his team as well because he, he needs to he needs to get help too. If, if all this is true, so, hopefully he is. Hopefully yeah. he is. If this is true, then a lot of healing needs to be done. I mean, right. I do want to say that we we look at sort of the trends of Diddy's relationships, and one thing that seems to be pretty um, clear is that he's not really good about. Uh, claiming somebody even with cassie it took him years before he claimed her right and uh now young miami is really falling into this you know she has the line i'm single and so diddy with it you know and all of that but I, but i do think that when you have these these people who have issues um committing there's right. also some challenges there so mm -hmm. there there certainly needs to be healing done i i uh for uh, Cassie, I hope for Kiki as well. Uh, I don't want to conflate their situations, but right. um, but I but here's another thing too, Randy. Um, does this also? I've I've seen some blogs, I've seen some postings. Does this also now open even more questions about the the surprise and sudden death of um, his uh, mm -hmm. Kim Porter? A absolutely, absolutely. And to your point, and not to, okay, I'm not accusing Diddy of murder, but right, I'm just of saying. course not. Yeah, of course not. Crazy. <laughs> please use your discernment and, and emotional intelligence here. Of course not. And to your point, uh, Stacey and producer Greer, you know, she she mentioned uh, Kim Porter as well. Um, absolutely. And then look at it. And, and to Mimi's point, you know, we we really do pray that Brother Love Diddy uh, get the help that he needs and deserves because he, you know, loving her so much after she's gone, even to where to where he says, you know, a lot of people said we hope that Diddy don't say anything. Like, please, your camp should make sure you say nothing until everything is, you know, ironed out. Diddy did post. He posted about the Love album. I believe it received a Grammy nod and uh, nomination and. Uh, he he says that this is his love letter to Kim Porter. You know, you look at the pain he feels. Yes, it does raise a lot of questions because look how how painful her death and how it affected him. You know, and how he feels about it. And again, to like like what Mimi said. You know, um, you can see him kind of still doing this this hamster wheel of of behavior of hurt, uh, even with even with him coming out and having his his newest child love he called her he named her love so and i had a question i got a story mm -hmm. right about kim porter mm -hmm. uh, so michael jackson had his 20th 30th anniversary concerts in new york you remember just before 9 11 right and um so the first show was friday september 8th and I, I, of course i got passes the family gave me passes but then i got a call 
from one of the brothers, one of Michael's brothers, asking me to, uh, would I share my past with Kim Porter? And my thing was, first of all, I didn't know Kim Porter at all. I heard about her, and I only heard about her um, through the, uh, the Jacksons and folks connected with the Jacksons. And there were some things going on there in California with her and Diddy at that time that seemed to need uh, law enforcement intervention from what I was told, right? right. Won't go into the, uh, the, I won't go that deep into what I was told happened, but I did see her. She came over to the Jackson's home at Havenhurst um, and everything that I'd heard, well, she was, appeared to be wearing it, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I met her in person under those uh that duress right right so anyway fast forward to the 2001 the shows and and so one of the brothers uh called that had already had it had planned to bring a date and um I, I didn't know kim like that at all and i'm like well that's puffy's girl you know i'm sure you guys can make provisions they said well expect a call from kim porter and I'm like, okay, well, I, I'm going with who I'm going because, quite frankly, I ain't going to score with Kim Porter. I'm going <laughs> to score with this date. That <laughs> who was but, Trey Brown? No. But, uh, <laughs> right. But, but um, throughout the show, the show, not throughout, but an hour, all, an hour into the show, both Diddy and Kim Porter were blowing my phone up. Wow, and I'm—I mean, for and my date was like, well, who is this? Who is that? You know, not that from a jealousy standpoint, but from from a curiosity standpoint, it was like, well, who is that that keeps calling you like this? Don't they know you had a show? I'm like, that's the problem. This person got to know I'm in here in the garden, you know, right. and um, you know, at this show, and I'm telling you, um, Mimi and Randy, it was no less than thirty-five calls probably 20 from her and 15 from Diddy, you know, and the voicemails were packed with, Hey, you know, uh, Kim is at the, at the garden where you at or whatever. I'm like, I never agreed that she, she would be, I would have to use my second pass for her. Right. And I just found it weird that this was happening. And of course, um, maybe that's why I can't, uh, Diddy doesn't uh, answer my calls today. <laughs> I don't know, but but I mean, it um, could be Stacy. It, it could, right? It could have that, something to do with it. That, but, you know. <laughs> but, but I just found it, at, especially given that time, and and I also in talking about all of this, you know, sometimes third hand we we tend to take a little blame too, right? right. Um, but I also wonder, did that not set something off between them two? Not the only thing, but something else to help set off what was going on with them. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, you never know. You I mean, I, you know, I don't want to speculate too much because right. he has been gone for now five years. I mean, right. at first I, I was even going to say, oh, you know, it, it, it was Kim uh, right before the pandemic because her, her, you know, was it COVID and we just didn't know it then? Yeah, we just didn't know. It was two years before 2020, so I don't yeah. think so. Uh, but I do want to just say that um, what we can say about their relationship, or at least what we've seen since, is that Diddy has done a lot of work to show how he wants to celebrate her legacy. Yes. Uh, and whether that is from feeling bad because of how he did her years ago, yes. or um, because he true that love was always there, and maybe all of these other people after were trying to uh, meet what, what, what the standards that sort of Kim set. Um, in his eyes, we, we'll never know. It's all speculation, but we do know it seems like there was some real love there that he's been coping yeah. with since. Um, I think he's recognizing that he blew it, right? I'm recognizing he blew it. Oh, what, gosh. What did he say, Randy? I, th I said, I think uh, Diddy said love of his life. Yeah. Love, love of his life. life. He called him the love of his life when mm -hmm. she passed. Yeah. And well, he, you know, I'm mother sorry, of his go ahead. Kids. Yeah, well, you know, and that that's a lot to be said too. Like we just uh, Mimi and I was saying, maybe recognizing that he he blew it, and 
And, you know, people say, oh, you get another chance at, at real life. You get one chance, Diddy. Yeah. <laughs> and he had, I, and I, I think he, that's how he feels. Say, I do love that his real love, I know we're wrapping up, but I have to say it. I love that his real love was a chocolate girl. I know that's <laughs> right. Shout out I to all the chocolate you. women out there. Yes. <laughs> um, that's right. I love that. Well, love and, that and so too. listen, and we do have to, to, to start wrapping, but Greer brings out another point. Um, so right, if that's his real love, and, and there's probably little doubt that Kim was his real love, right? To him anyway. Yes. But then you got Cassie and others standing in her shadow. Right? Well, that's what I was saying. You know, it might be that folks could not really meet the standards or the or whatever Kim had set in their relationship, or maybe it was just his feelings. Uh, again, all this is speculation. We don't know what was happening. Uh, to me, the thing that we is fact is that it all roots back to mental health. Get help. Get help. If yes. you know, I, I I think that if you feel completely fine, I promote and encourage mental health. Um, on both ends. On both on on any end. On any end, no matter who you are, what you look like, um, what you've experienced. Um, you know, it, it's so important to prioritize our our health in all ways. Um, yeah. and, Trauma well, and for the kids too. Like we we forget that you know this is publicly out there, and his children are you know outside of the baby that was just born a, a year or two ago. Um, the girls are sixteen, and then a, a chance his, his other girl. I think she's fifteen. So all of these kids are are old enough to uh, see what is going on with their dad. We don't want this cycle to continue. You know that's yeah. why I'm so I'm so and that looks like a beautiful family there. right there. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, was, yeah. beautiful. I, I, I love I, him. I love to see him with his children. But I, I love that Mimi said that that Diddy too deserves uh, to get help. Like you know, go go and get the help that you need. You know, go and truly. And y'all, please stop lying to your therapist. Yeah, <laughs> stop lying you. to the therapist. That's the, that's that's the way to wrap. Listen, folks, um, we promised you Frederick Yane. We will have him on Monday. This conversation really was one that needed to be had. Um, so we we will have Frederick Yane. The, he played with Stevie Wonder. He played with Prince, and now he's featured on Flowers, the new movie, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, but to, to sum it all up, folks, if you or a loved one is experiencing any type of uh, domestic violence, there is a hotline. You can text eight eight seven eight eight, or you can call one eight hundred seven nine nine seven two three three. Uh, help is available. The, the National Domestic Hotline. Again, 800-799-7233. Or you can text 88788. Um, all the best to Cassie. And as you said, uh, you both said, uh, you know, we, we hope that uh, if all of this is the case, Diddy, we hope that you uh, do get some, get some needed therapy and everybody comes out of this uh, for the better, um, somehow for the better. Uh, we, we, we wish you all the best. Uh, thanks for watching. Let it be known. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you, Randy. Thank and you. Thank, thank you all. You. And Power 96, we love you, man. We ain't hating on you. Yeah, that's you, right. You they don't don't the you're, you're a part um, of the show. At the, we, like, yeah, <laughs> he, said he made his therapy, so everybody else should seek therapy. And that's yeah. where we'll leave it. We'll see you on Monday with Frederick Yane. Take care.